Good morning. Oh, 0900 prayer request time. A little rocking for Jesus, eh? Amen. This is the 0900 prayer request time. It's about you guys out there in Periscope land talking to Jesus. Hey, hi there. How are you doing? This is the 0900 prayer request. It's about you talking to Jesus this morning. Are you willing to talk to Jesus? Are you ready? Amen. My name is Missionary Norman Ector. I'm a baby boomer rocking for Jesus. You millennials and Generation X's out there. Hey, somebody's got a question. Hey, hi there, Miguel. What's your question there, my friend? I am a connection problem. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that, Miguel. Always a problem. The Earth. Okay, the Earth. New computer? Nah, nah, just a different monitor. A little bigger, that's all. Oh, 900 prayer requests. How years old is you? you? Must not remember me from yesterday. Lots. Yes, I remember you from yesterday. All right, I titled... Uh, Hypocrite Pastors was the name of my uh, broadcast from yesterday. It's up on Periscope. All right. So I remember you, yeah. And uh, the earth in the Bible. Okay. What? What's the question? All right. What's the question? The morning I saw a prayer request from the Netherlands. Boy. Hey. This morning I saw. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm glad it's catching on. Amen. We need to, everybody needs to pray to God. Answer, please. Okay. What is the answer? What's your question? You said the earth and the Bible. I'm not sure what's your question. All right. How many years? The earth. Simple. The earth. Dateless past. Dateless future. How's that? Okay, thank you. O oh, nine hundred prayer request time. <laughs> hey, hey, my, uh, hey, you guys, hey, is Jesus on your side this morning? Is Jesus on your side? Are you cranky and crabby this morning? For you there in the states, it's morning time. For you on the other side of the world, it's evening. Hey, hope you had a good day. It's nine thousand years in the Bible. Hey, okay, I'll go along with that. If you that's what you say, I agree with you, man. It's 9,000, 6,000, whatever you say the Bible says it is, I'll agree with you, okay? Oh, 0900 prayer request time. Amen? Yes, I agree with that too. 60, I guess that's 60, 600 million. I agree with that too. Amen. I'm easy to get along with, my friend. All right. <laughs> All right, what have you say about that? Hey, I love you. I'm feeling good this morning, all right? Praise God, you guys can't get to me yet. You'll probably get to me, but I, uh, for right now, I feel good. You just don't know how ridiculous this question seemed to me at times. <laughs> That's all. Why do you care how old the earth is? What do you care? What are you going to do? You're going to run. You're going to talk to somebody about it. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> oh, I give up. Earth is 454 billion. Yes, 454 billion. Ah, yes. And two days and six hours, too. Don't forget that, too. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. We're rocking for Jesus this morning. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh, is it 500 billion? 500 billion once? 500 billion twice? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't understand nothing. <laughs> well, it's good, Miguel, that you don't understand. I get some of the ridiculous statements. <laughs> okay. It's okay, Miguel. Let it go. Oh, 0900 prayer request time. <laughs> I'm Norman Edgar, and I'm 600 million years old. <laughs> I'm from an alien race, guys. <laughs> oh.
Oh, man. Well, the Mormons really were from an alien race. That's the truth, folks. <laughs> okay, but I'm infallible like the Roman Catholic. I'm infallible. I'm like the Pope. I can't make a mistake. So it's got to be what I say it is or everybody else is wrong. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, 900 prayer request time. If you can get through today, if you can get through to God today, you're doing good. Amen. If you better go to a different site this morning. <laughs> oh, okay. I got to get back on my meds, folks. <laughs> I guess that's not a good joke, I guess. Okay, <laughs> man, great, but no, nothing of what you accept, except that you, okay, thank you very much for your analysis of me, <laughs> I've been trying to figure me out for a long time, my friend, <laughs> this is the 0900 prayer request, not a self-help analysis site, <laughs> hey, let me tell you, folks, it's about you asking for prayer. It's not about psyching me out because you'll never figure me out. Amen. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey, we're going to start again. Okay, we're going to start. We're going to be serious. Now, this is a serious business. This is a religion business. It's serious. We're going to be serious now. We're not going to make a joke about anything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, here, this is the 0900, 9 o'clock in the morning, folks, 9 o'clock. We're talking to God this morning, okay. <laughs> what is your prayer request, okay? This is about you guys asking for prayer. What is it that you would like to have prayer about? This is the 0900 prayer request, all right? It is about you guys asking for prayer. Would you like to have prayer? Would you like to have somebody agree with you in prayer? That's what this is about, all right? Shall we take a look at the board this morning? Let's take a look at the board, huh? All right, my friends. Let's take a look and see what we got today. The board is a little bit different today, as you can see. Our views are up to 5,791. That's as of yesterday. And the hearts, 81,052. All right. As you can see, we're broadcasting all over the world. All right. <coughs> Let's take a look here. All right. Let's take a look here. This is Kazakhstan. Uh, what is the name of this country? Oh, Karakistan, I think it's how Karakistan. Not Kazakhstan, but Karakistan, I think is how you say it. And then we got uh, uh, Nepal, India, <coughs> Indonesia. And then what we got here? China, Shanghai, Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand. And we're all over here. I mean, in this area. Look here, folks. We are just all over. All right. We're up here. This is New Zealand <coughs> and Sweden. Everything. We got here, here's all the UK, here, Scotland, everything, Wales, everything you can think of. Over in here, we're in the Black Sea area. We're in Crimea. Oh, man, it's just uh, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, all this Middle East country. All these little pins represent people that have contacted us <coughs> about prayer. Amen. <clears throat> prayer is a universal thing. Many people pray to rocks and stones and concrete painted idols and, and little prayer beads, rosaries, pray to statutes, dead people, mountain streams, all kinds of things people pray to. And the people 
uh, believe that their prayers are being answered by uh, by that. <coughs> why the uh, why the Italian flag? <laughs> All right. Uh, are you talking about this up here? Okay. All right. I see that prayer request. Giovanni Ferretti. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be nice if he... <laughs> All right, Miguel. You got good humor today, too, huh? <laughs> We're going to pray for this individual. Good morning, my friend. Good morning, potty mouse. God bless all. Hey, that's good, man. You guys are getting on to this prayer request thing. You know, hey, I've had to block a lot of people. I just block them now. I I got fed up with their potty mouth. They're pretty foul and wicked and just say hateful things. And they don't even want to try to listen. So I blocked them. As you can see, when you look at my uh, Periscope ID, you'll see the number of people I blocked so far. I just block them now. I just, I was trying to be patient with them and understanding, but they're just as hateful as they can be. So, and what was happening... It didn't bother me so much, but other people, they were uh, really cursing and saying vile, wicked things to people. Uh, no, it was Protestant religionists are the big problem, okay? People that think they're Christians. They are the most hateful people of all, okay? <coughs> uh, <coughs> today... Miguel, today in uh, St. Charles, Missouri, the weather is the weather is about fifty degrees Fahrenheit. Miguel, the weather in Missouri fifty degrees Fahrenheit. There you go, telephone tough guys. Yes, yes, correcto. And it's a clear, sunny day today, Miguel. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. Ah, yes. Everything, same here. Everything is starting to grow, the flowers, everything. We're going to pray for a restored relationship for this fellow. All right? Father, we pray in Jesus' name that for a restored relationship. Father, we ask that your, your power and your grace can work in this situation as it can in all situations, Father. We believe and pray that in this situation that your wisdom and knowledge be brought forth to all parties concerned, that the relationship can be restored <coughs> in the way that you so desire to have it, Father, according to your word in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. We give you praise and glory for that, Father, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> this is the 0900 prayer request time. It's about you guys in Periscope land asking for prayer. You know what today is? Today is Wednesday, and at uh, about quarter to ten, I will be leaving going to the, my little restaurant day. The Chick-fil-A restaurant, I meet, I go there every Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock, in anticipation of meeting other people, spirit-born, <coughs> committed Christians that want to believe and pray for a revival in this area. <coughs> so... <coughs> So I'll be finishing out around 9.30, okay? This is the 0900 prayer request. It's about you guys out there asking for prayer, all right? It's about praying. It's about you asking for prayer. It's not going to be a chat time. It's about prayer requests. Prayer requests. 
Amen. It's about you guys out there in Periscope land talking to God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of the Protestant Christian Bible. The God that has inspired the people to write only one book from him, and that's the Protestant Christian Bible. There are no other church traditions. There are no other Protestant denominational doctrines that are binding. Okay, Miguel, thank you very much. <coughs> Have a good evening, my friend. This is the 0900 prayer request time. It's about you guys talking to God. Yesterday I had a person to ask me something I thought was kind of unique. <coughs> it was a rhetorical statement. And he was saying, or she, that praying was like wishing. It didn't see any difference. And you, you have to admit that <coughs> wishing and praying, as we understand it, are in some ways very similar. Because when we pray, the reason a lot of people don't hear from God or miss God or misinterpret what God's saying to them in prayer is because people are wishing for their own outcome to happen. <coughs> God's will, Jesus told his disciples, when you pray, pray this prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> That's right. You must, well, not really, not really, because prayer is open. And I. this is something you need to understand, too. Look, this is why the Protestant church is such a pathetic mess and represents more devilish doctrines than the doctrines of Jesus, the Apostle, and the Evangelist of the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, is because people misunderstand this. Grace. <clears throat> Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor. Okay, I got you. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. <clears throat> the 0900 prayer request is about you asking God. And grace enables all people, even when you're sinners, to understand and know about God because God helps you to come to Him. If there was no grace, there was no divine help from God, all sinners would be locked in like the New Testament says, be prisoners of sin. You could never get out. You could never escape sin and death, guilt and condemnation. You could never escape on your own as a human. But God's grace, grace, God's power, strength, love, and favor to all people allows all people to begin, enables people to begin to understand about justification. Yes, I'm going to be leaving at in about oh, 20 to 10. And this Chick-fil-A, again, I've been going there for over a year and a half now. And up on the website, howtobecomeachristiantoday.com, I'm going there in anticipation of meeting others that want to have a revival in this area. I'm, I'm not for wanting to start a church, prayer group, cell group, no. And I don't want to be the leader of nothing. <clears throat> what I want to do is pray with others that God will raise up a God-fearing preacher man or woman. All right? That will share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not trying to start a church, but revival that Jesus is real. He's not some pigment of somebody's imagination. And this Protestant religionist churches that we got today are phony balonies. They're not real. Jesus is real. He's a miraculous, power-saving God. All right? He can do things. This pathetic mess we call Protestant religionists, they can't do anything except propagate their own, own uh, programs and ideas. 
So I'm going there. I've sent letters out, emails that is, to over 60 some different churches in this area where I live, inviting them, all right, to just believe in prayer. You don't have to be with me or think the same way I do, but, and this is not some this is just to get to get to know each other a little bit at the Chick-fil-A. That's it. But our purpose is to pray in secret wherever you want to pray at. It's not a prayer time inside the rest or anything like that. It's just to say, hey, how you doing? Just like I'm talking to you guys on Periscope. All right? If you think I'm different out there on the outside, you think I talk different if you were sitting right in front of me. I got news for you. I've been in this stuff 40 years. I've been in front of so many different pastors and evangelists. They'll all sit down and you get them off to themselves and they'll say, yeah, Brother Norman, you're right. Yes, it is a mess. Yes. And they'll turn right around and go right back out there and play the stupid game again because they want that money. They want to fit in. They don't want to say anything about anything else because they're they're out of it. You're not one of the boys in the religious circle. And that goes for Pentecostal, Charismatics, and the Methodist Presbyterian, too. Messianics. A Seven-day Adventist. So there's, they are so, there are so many anti-Christ religion, Christian religious groups, that if you guys halfway knew what you were involved with, if you think you're a Christian, you wouldn't go into a church house. But most of you that go to a church have never been saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb. You don't know what it really is. You're just a religionist. You're good, moral people, and you think you're doing the right thing, and you're, you're giving it all you got, and that's what it's all about. You giving what you got instead of this. Grace. Grace allows all people, the old vile, wretched sinner like I was, to come to the knowledge and truth about Jesus. If it wasn't for grace, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Amen? Look, what do you think? Look, I'm going to show you something here. You've seen this before, folks. If you've been in my classes, you been, you know what this is. You know what this sign says. If I can get it to sit up there. Look here, look at that sign. Now, if you, if you ever need to understand something about the Bible, it's it. I don't know if you guys can read that. I hope you can. I'll help you along. This is in the book of Ephesians, the Protestant Christian Bible, book of Ephesians, New Testament, book of Ephesians, written to the, the folks that lived in Ephesus, okay? It is by grace you have been saved. Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor to all 7 billion people on this planet now. And it was that same grace 2,000 years ago. It's going to be the same grace 2,000 years from now. Or like that other dude was saying earlier, the earth is 454 billion years old, whatever it was, whatever it's going to, grace is still going to be the same because it's God's power, strength, love, and favor towards humans. He's not going to stop loving us on day 492 billion. Hello. So it's by grace you have been saved through faith. Now get this. Everybody thinks, oh, you got to accept Jesus and say, oh, I believe in Jesus by faith, and then you're saved. That's wrong. <laughs> Incorrect to look. And this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God. What is the faith to believe? It's by grace. Grace is the gift of God to give you that faith. Without grace, you can't be saved. That's why we got a bunch of legalistic people, the do's and don'ts of the churches. All right? You want to join a church, you got to agree to the way they believe and interpret things. If you don't, you can't be it. You got these phony baloney pastors that sit up there and think they've done something by getting a Bible college education, getting a master's degree or a doctor's degree. It's just garbage. Garbage in, garbage out. That's all there is to it. I, I don't know how plain besides garbage you can get. Garbage. It does nothing for you except helps you 
To understand 101 psychology taught in any public school, community college, high school level. That's all it is. How to coexist with people. They don't care. The Protestant religions don't care about Jesus and people going to hell, burning in hell. They don't care about that. They got to support their family and send their kids to college. They got to go on vacation. They need that money, and they're going to sweet talk you. They're not going to tell you. They don't even know the truth to tell you to begin with, okay? What do you think about religion subject in high school? Here we have, but on the calendar, yeah. Well, sorry, Miguel. Miguel, when you get older, you'll have to choose, okay? 0900 prayer request time. So, I was talking about yesterday, fellow said, wishing and praying is the same thing. Well, the only way you can pray is by grace. And most of the time, now get this, most of the time people are clueless. They have no idea. They think they are praying to God because they choose, because they want to. But they, what they don't realize is God's grace because you're in sin, you're in darkness. You don't realize that God loves you when you're a filthy, rotten sinner. You're under guilt and condemnation. You understand? You're separated from God. You're in darkness. And you turn to God. When you turn to God, you think you're doing it yourself. But when you grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord, you're going to find out it's grace. Just like the scripture said, it's a gift from God. It's a gift to all of us sinners that were saved. Washed in the blood of, of the Lamb, Jesus, He atoned for our sins. Now we can live a sin-free life if we choose to. But if we occasionally sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus, who we can ask for forgiveness and get forgiveness and get up and keep going. But if you make a habit of sinning every day, you're not, a, you're not spiritually born again. You're serving the devil. Forget it. You can go out there and join them churches, them Protestant religion churches. They'll all tell you, man, you're just an old sinner. You'll never, you'll never be washed in the blood of the Lamb. This atonement thing about Jesus is a hoax. That's what they're telling you. My wife, Selma, and I walked into a Christian church here in St. Charles, Missouri. Well, St. Peter's. They got a sign, man, it's got to be 50 foot wide, 50 foot tall, says Christian Church. Walked inside, and the old pastor guy, we came back from a vacation. We just happened to be there today. He came back from four weeks on vacation. You know how he started his, his topic out? This is no joke. How that we are all sinners, and we'll be in sin every day of our lives. And how to live with that. Well, I immediately, with my wife, we got up and walked out the door. The guy, and everybody, and it said, the sign says, Christian Church. And they believe they're sinners. You understand what's the point? Of, and that's the way it is. These people no more believe in, these Protestant religionists no more believe in the atoning blood of Jesus Christ that you can be a new creature in Christ. We need a Jesus revival. And that's why I go, uh, and, I, and I'm believing every day too. God opened the door for Periscope, and I've been on Periscope every morning. You're not going to hear me saying different things too much. Except I get a little riled now and again when I see the hypocrite pastors come on here, the hypocrite religionists come on here. I don't mind the potty mouth people and the haters. At least they're just in sin and darkness. What I hate is the hypocrite. Well, I shouldn't say hate. I only hate the devil. But I really resent people coming on here thinking they know what they're talking about and they're blowing smoke. Nobody calls them out because there isn't too many people really walking the walk today. You understand? You got people that that go to a church. You understand? Let, let me let me make this crystal clear. If you meet someone and you ask them this question, you say, "Are you a Christian?" And they say, "Oh yeah, 
I go to this church or that church. If you hear someone say, are you a Christian? They say, oh yeah, I go to the Methodist, or I go to the Pentecostal, or I go to Osteen's church, or I go to Hagee's church, or I go to Kenneth Copeland, or I go to Benny Hinn, or I go to the Baptist. If they, if they say stuff like that, you can rest assured they're just religionists. Religionists are just the same as Roman Catholic, as Islam, as Buddhist, as Hindu. Methodists, Presbyterian are religionists. They're no different from Islam. They're no different from Roman Catholic. They're no different from Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, Hindus, Buddhists, animists, atheists, deists. They're all the same. Even though the atheists say they don't believe in God, they got a belief. And that belief is anti-God. Okay, hello. The Protestant are the worst of the lot because they, Protestant religionists, they are deceiving the world with their phony religions. These missionaries that go out, I've been a Protestant Christian missionary for 40 years, and missionaries that's going out to third world countries today, you think they're telling people about Jesus and the way of salvation? You better get a grip because they're not. What they're doing is they're making them a little Baptist over there, little Methodist. <laughs> whatever, whatever group is sending them out, that missionary is piping off the same thing you hear in, that, in the churches here. That what you're hearing in the churches here is an anti-Christ message. The Protestant religionists don't believe in the atonement of Jesus Christ. You understand? They believe their church doctrine and their interpretations. And if you don't agree with them, hit the door, Jack. You can read online everything. Hey, friends, how you doing? You caught me preaching. You said I wasn't going to be doing too much, yet, but I guess I am. This is the old 900 prayer request. It's about you guys praying. Amen. Talking to God. Talking to God. And you need to talk to him, folks. You, not me. Don't you? <laughs> okay. God loves you. All right. <laughs> God loves you guys. All right? Oh, 900 prayer requests. God loves you. God wants all people in the mundo. You see the map? You see the map o periscope map back there? All people. God wants all of you to pray to him. Roman Catholicism, Protestant religionists, Muslims, Islam, Buddhist, Hindus, total meaningless, total nothing. They're zero, zero. They don't, it's, it's a religion and it's meaningless. It makes the people, the adherents of the different religions, they feel good. Oh, yeah, I'm a Buddhist. Oh, yeah, I'm a Catholic. Oh, yeah, I'm a Baptist. Oh, yeah, I'm a Methodist. Meaningless. Jesus said you have to be spiritually born again. And how do you become spiritually born again? God, Jesus told Nicodemus, with God, all things are possible. You have to understand grace justification and repentance when you understand grace justification and repentance you can become spiritually born again if you decide you understand but you got to hear the message first before you can decide you ask people today how do you become a christian you know what they'll say just go ask your friends at the university or college or community college or ask your friends at work, how do you become a Christian? They'll say, oh, go to that guy's church. Oh, he's a cool dude. Go over and see him, man. Go, go to that church. And what do you do? You'll run to that church house. You'll listen to some man talk about what he thinks about God. And if he talks the way you like, man, you'll go back. Oh, I like that guy. If those people come up to you and say, oh, we love you, man, you'd be in there like hooking a crook, man. 
<laughs> you understand? That's the old con job. A sucker born every day, as old, old Barnum and Bailey Circus Man said. P.D. Barnum. A sucker every day. The church will pull you in. This Protestant religionist will pull you in. You know how they do it? They'll sympathize with you, you poor little guy. Oh, you poor woman. You, Oh, your husband left you. Your wife left you. Oh, you got problems with your children. Oh, you lost your job. Oh, you lost it. Oh, you had an earthquake and you lost your house. Oh, you lost this and you lost that. And all of a sudden, you're involved with that church and that group because they extended help to you in your situation. What? That's the hook of the devil. The Messianic Lodge, Masons, the most anti-Christ secret society on this planet is so anti-God, it's pathetic, but they'll put the Shriners out there helping little children in the Shriners Hospital. They are evil. Do you realize the blood oaths that they take are not even public knowledge? You think becoming a 32nd degree Mason is something you hear about on the news every day? It's a secret blood oath that you take. It is so demonic and satanic, you, you, you would be shocked. You think I'm making it up? Go on the internet and try to find something out about the, Mason, about the Masons. All you're going to see is this phony, baloney stuff about helping children. Read about the Roman Catholic Church. You read about this guy, uh, Giovanni Ferrette, in the 1870s. This guy, one man, one man in 1870 said he could never make a religious mistake. He, this one man, said, I'm going to make this woman... <clears throat> Oh, okay. Okay, I okay, I'm interested. What did you find out about the Masons? You got my attention, okay? <coughs> it's awful. You better believe it's awful. Let me tell you something. I had family members that were involved in it. And uh uh Oh, there's another one too. The women are involved in it. Uh, Eastern Star. It's evil. For, I mean, it is satanic. Oh, oh I could go on. I'm searching. Pope Pius IX is blessed for the church. Pope Pius IX is of the devil. All right, simple as that. The devil used him. The Roman Catholic Guard. They are so, they murder and kill. That's their history. Murder and kill anyone that opposed their rule. They burn people at the stake. You know why? Because some guy said the world's not flat. Well, they burnt that dude to a stake and burned him up. Do you realize today, right now today, Last week or two weeks ago, I heard on the news here in the United States of America how that the, the, the political powers that be wanted the Department of Justice to begin investigation on criminal charges against people that were against climate All right? This climate change. Begin, <laughs> and you think things haven't changed? This this is an evil... We live in an evil world, folks. <laughs> All right, what's the question there? Got another question. It's going to come on. Islam is the true religion? Wow. Islam... Roman Catholicism, Protestant religionists are equal. Islam, Protestant religionists, and Roman Catholics are equal.
I wouldn't doubt it as far as the temple being built there. It's an evil place. All right. I mean, <laughs> the, hey, look, we're, we're walking in evil times. I mean, it's evil not because of the time, but it's been evil ever since Eve said, did God really say? I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. We're living in a just day. This, you can read the Bible story. All right. It, it just to me, it's just this month. I don't doubt it. Yes, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt anything. It's evil. We're we're just in I. I am 40 years as a Protestant Christian missionary. I have yet, I've yet to walk into a church that was actually living what Jesus said to do. Sure, you have to look for the one God. Okay. Uh, Okay, thank you for your question. Okay, you asked me what I thought about the Muslim. Okay, Muslims are good moral people. Roman Catholics are good moral people. Protestant religionists are good moral people. Their religion is meaningless. Okay. Now, would you like to know why I say that? Would you like to know why I say that about the three religions? If I mean, if, if you understand English good, I don't know if English is probably your second language. For the person that asks about Islam. Would you like to know why I say they're equal? And would you like for me to prove that to you? I can prove it too. All right, that's a good one, huh? All right, this is the 0900 prayer request time. All right. <coughs> here we go. This is the sign right here. It's about you guys talking and asking God for help in your life. Why don't we hear people praying? Why don't people pray? Why don't you hear this? Okay. Yeah. By the way, Miguel in Spain is 16 years old, and he's just now beginning to realize that the Roman Catholic Church, which he didn't agree with, was incorrecto. And now he just got, he just purchasing a, a Bible, and, uh, well, the English Bible, that is, in Spanish, okay? And his English is only at about, uh, there's only one God, Allah, okay? So Miguel only understands about 30 to 40 percent of English, but he's trying, okay? So you got to give him a lot of grace, okay? <clears throat> okay, so I, okay, thank you very much for your comment there, my fellow from Islam, thank you very much, okay, I realize English is not your first language, okay, this is the 0900 prayer request time, I'm Norman Itker, I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, I've had five missionary tours in the Southeast Asia, Seven years into Mexico, I'm the founder and director of LAM, Light Amidst the Monk Christian Outreach, Northern Hill Country of Thailand. Incorporated in 1978, we believe in only the Protestant Christian Bible as the divine inspired word from God. <coughs> okay, well, okay, Miguel. Just remember, Miguel, you're going to... Everything will come in due season. Everything, you will begin to understand more and more. All right? Thank you very much, Miguel, for being patient. Okay? All right. This is the 0900 prayer request. It's about you guys talking and praying to God. Amen?
I got a couple of more minutes here before I'm going to have to get off because I'm going to be heading to the Chick-fil-A here in Missouri at 10 o'clock because French Parish. Ah, okay. Are we talking about down in Louisiana Parish or are we talking about in France? <laughs> okay. Amen. All right, Cajun folks down there in Louisiana area. Oh, 0900 prayer request time. It's about you guys praying. You bet. You bet. Good. Good for you too, Miguel. Learn. When you go to Spanish, you should learn French. French is easier than English. You should go. You should go Spanish, French. French will be easy for you, Miguel. And then do English. Okay. <laughs> This is the 0900 prayer request time. It's about you guys. Let's take a look at the Periscope map today, all right? Today we're at 5,000 views and hearts are at 80,000, okay? Oh, you're French, sir. Oh, okay, good, good. So difficult English is your second, third language, okay? Uh, the person that's French is English, your second or third language. This is the 0900 prayer request time. All right. <coughs> it's about you talking to God. Amen. Talking and communicating with God. God loves you. God sent Jesus for you so that what you ask Jesus, he can do it. You know, I don't understand why we don't want to pray more to God. Okay? Listen, I want to read you a couple of things. Listen to this. And ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. This is in Matthew. All right? Jesus said, seek, ask, knock, and it will be open. You'll find. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. In John 14. Okay, my friend. Thank you for commenting there in France. We appreciate it. God love you, Jesus. The, the God, Jesus, loves you too, man. All right? 1 John 5. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Wow. But what's God's will? Wait a minute, says here. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Well, how are you going to know God's will? You can know God's will. It's revealed to us in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle, and Evangelist. Whatever you ask for in prayer, you better agree with those truths in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament. That's God's will. All right? So you know what you're going to pray. You can say, oh, okay, here's the prayer. Yes, God wants this. But here's the kicker, folks. No, it doesn't mean that you can pray for material things. It says, ask anything, all right? But here's the kicker. When you're praying, all right, here's the thing. When you're praying and you see in the Protestant Christian Bible that God, Jesus, healed people, and you pray for healing for someone and that healing doesn't happen, and then here's how you can tell if you're really sincere in your prayer. If you can praise the Lord, when that person that you in sickness, if you can praise the Lord when that person, if that person dies and doesn't get any better. If at that moment that person dies and you can praise the Lord, because it's according to his will. The person could get better. You'll praise the Lord. But if that person doesn't get better and die, will you praise the Lord? All right. 
That's just the acid test at the bottom of the line. No matter how it comes down, there's there was an old boy years ago called, he wrote a book called Prison of Praise. He praised God. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> he said his car was turning over. He was in an automobile accident. His car was turned over. He started praising God. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Start praising God. And the car was rolling over and over. Let me tell you something. Paul and Silas got beat half to death, thrown inside prison, and were chained up. Let me tell you, folks, you want to get down to the point about you say you're a Christian. Let me tell you something. When you start suffering, and I've been there myself, <laughs> and sometimes I can praise the Lord, but there's been many times, folks, I failed God, and I couldn't praise God for nothing, man. I was so downtrodden and depressed. <laughs> I thank God for his mercy. He forgives us un our unbelief and doubt, and I can do it, man. I can doubt like the uh, Thomas could have been my papa, because I can doubt at times, folks. I am not ashamed to tell you, but I can tell you God forgives you, because you ask God for your forgiveness for your unbelief, because that unbelief is sin. You, stay, you keep walking in it. You understand? God's a good God, and he'll help you on through. But what we got to remember is that we're human, and if we're praying for another human being, that human being's got a free will choice how he wants to live his or her life. If they want to live for God, fine. If they don't, that's up to them. You can't force your prayer onto them. You've heard people say, well, I'm going to pray that day. I'm praying for my son to come to church or get saved. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. It's a useless prayer. You know why? Because this justification is through Jesus alone. If your prayer can bring somebody into the kingdom of God, then you don't need Jesus. You replace justification in the blood atonement of Christ with your prayer. And that's a lie of the devil. Just think about that. Amen? Look, folks, it's my time to cruise off here. I got to get out because I got to go to the restaurant. My wife, Selma, is coming on at 11 o'clock, all right? So that's about an hour from now, all right? But again, I'm headed to the Chick-fil-A restaurant, Highway 94 and Mid-Rivers Mall Drive at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. And I go there for one reason, to meet other people that want to believe in prayer, not praying at this restaurant, praying when they at their home, whatever, for a revival that God would raise up a preacher man to share that glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Not to start a church, but for people to fall in love with Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's the whole thing about becoming a Christian. You'll fall in love with this guy. And it'll get personal. If you decide to doubt the Bible, God, and what's going on in your life, you offend Jesus. And that offense towards Jesus will cause you to drop to your knees and ask for forgiveness. You understand? That's what love is. Because Jesus loves you. He died on that tree. And ain't none of us died on no tree for nobody. He did, and he did it willingly. So once you've been born again, once you've been, once that Holy Spirit of God coexists with your spirit and you're a born again Christian, let me tell you something, you're going to love the Lord. Okay, Miguel, thank you very much. Okay, you can see the uh, replay. I got to go, guys. See you guys. I'll see you tomorrow, 9 o'clock, but Selma's coming on. Hey, Russia. I got to go. My wife, Selma's coming on at 11, okay? Bye-bye, guys. I think I'm going by.